Bo Nix. Where, where are you at with, uh, with Bo Nix? Bo Nix is uh, an interesting player. Um, and he's a guy that I have some mixed feelings about, but I mean, in the last two seasons at Oregon, we've seen him take immense strides forward. We've seen improvement, I think, in, in each of his seasons. Uh, you know, I, I think things got a little bit derailed after his freshman season at Auburn, got back on track in a big way in 2022 and 2023. Um, you know, 4,500 passing yards, 9.6 yards per attempt average, 45 passing touchdowns, three interceptions, led – all quarterbacks in 2023 with 200 plus dropbacks in PFF passing grade, ranked second in passing yards, second in passing touchdowns. What really stands out is the 0.9% turnover worthy play rate that, that was lowest in the FBS. But I'll say for all of that, that safety to his game, just a 4.1% big time play rate that ranks 69th mm -hmm. among those quarterbacks and among all of the other elite uh, quote unquote elite options that we're talking about today, all the, the potential first round picks, early second round picks. He was the only other, he was the only prospect with a sub 6% big time uh, play, play rate. Like there's a lot to like about his game in terms of safety, but I do think at the next level, he's probably going to project as more of a game manager than a gamer as I, I think the other prospects that we've discussed so far project for me. I'm totally with you. I, I look at Bo Nix is a weird one for me. Uh, look, he was a former five-star recruit, right? Coming out of high school. I remember there was a lot of excitement around him coming in. He started immediately at Auburn and I, I was still doing data collection for PFF at the time. And every time I got an Auburn game, I just didn't see it from Knicks. It never came away overly impressed with his game in all three of those years that that he was there. I just didn't see him as like a real NFL prospect. And like you said, he definitely got better after transferring to Oregon. And now, you know, watching back that Oregon tape, I do feel better about his improvement there. Uh, it, look, it took him five years as a starter to kind of get there. He's 24 years old now, so definitely on the other side. But I think that experience is going to be super valuable once he does get to the NFL. Um, but yeah, I, like you said, the turnover worthy play rate was, was great. Uh, overall negatively graded plays were, were excellent as well. But, you know, I look at his kind of body of work and, and what he's actually done to get to that turnover worthy play rate and, and, you know, lower uh, negative graded plays he has a relatively low career average depth the target, right? It's well below average at 8.1. The big time throw rate, like you said, at 4.3% for his career is 13th percentile among quarterback prospects since 2017. Um, he also has one of the higher percentages of passes short of the sticks as well at 53%. Um, just 45% of his passing yards coming from his air yards, which is seventh percentile among prospects since 2017. So it, <laughs> There are red flags, I think, for for fantasy, like you said, because it it does point more towards that that game manager style. And unless he's going to be like the Patrick Mahomes and and you know manage a, a way to maximize his short yardage throws and and get the most from his players around him, it, then you know that he'd be a pretty big outlier in that regard. But even though when he does attempt those deeper throws, the, the catchable pass rate, the accuracy isn't amazing by any means, like 56th percentile on 10 plus yards a dot and 48th percentile on 20 plus a dot. So it, it does help him keep avoiding those negatives, which is nice, but it's for him, it seems like it comes at a cost of some of those big playmaking opportunities. Right. And that's where you kind of worry about him for, for fantasy purposes, unless you're in leagues that like hammer you for turnovers and incompletions, for example, I, I have a harder time picturing him being like a fantasy starter basically. Yeah. And it's interesting because you did see a, a lot of touchdown production on the ground for Bo Nix is a pretty solid athlete. I think he's had 20 mm -hmm. rushing touchdowns over the past two seasons at Oregon, but I do think like that's not a crux of his game. I think a lot of the crux to his game is going to be in avoiding mistakes, which he's really good at. But I, I, you know, I don't necessarily know that, like you said, unless your league settings are ones that absolutely demolish you and, and, you know, you, you get 
minus four points for an interception or something like that. I don't necessarily know that there's going to be a ton of upside here, especially in like a single quarterback league, let's say. Like, I, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of incentive for fantasy managers to invest, but like certain NFL offenses and like, I'll, I'll say for the Steelers, Bo Nix was a guy that I was thinking like, ah, the, the Steelers are probably going to be maybe a little bit intrigued by Bo Nix because of the ball control, because of the level of safety, because of the lack of turnovers like that, that was kind of a, an offensive fit that I thought we were going to see play through potentially if they didn't make moves at quarterback before the draft. They obviously did, but I do think like the team that's going to be interested in him is a, a team that wants to control the football, wants to limit mistakes, wants to play good defense, and that's not going to be conducive to scoring fantasy points. Yep, yeah, totally with you there. So that's Bo Nix. Uh- 